Yes, people, welcome back to Albert JTV. It's been a while, people, for life stories. Hashtag episode 19 with Arsenal Artist Royalty. But before we get into it, people, let's smash the intro. Yes, people, welcome back to Albert JTV. Life Stories is back once again. It has been a long time. Hashtag episode 19. I'll be joined by Arsenal Artist Royalty, the brilliant at Ruth Beck Arts, at Llewellyn Illustrations and at Seni Sketches. The supreme, talented and world-class lineup. Hashtag talented artists. Welcome back to Life Stories. And there you have it, people. Surround funky intro into Life Stories back once again. Um, yeah, Life Stories, episode 19. It has been a while. I think the last show was actually when I had the amazing... Northeast Dorset tone Tom White from Sky Sports News. So um, that was a that was a blast, I must admit. Um surreal moment. But I've got an amazing guest panel with me. Arsenal artist wrote, as I said, people will get the obligatories out of the way. Smash the like button on YouTube, Facebook, and share on the Twitter pic, Twitter page as well. And all their listeners, you will never, ever, ever, ever be forgotten because you can hear everybody's Dorset tones, Chippenham, Medway, Guildford. South East London. <laughs> so, we're all good to go. Um, I did say to the guys before we went live that I was always going to get these three on. I just actually needed to tell them first. But they, but, but, but they all agreed. And um, yeah, really, really excited about this one. This is a very different um, life story. So I, I cannot wait to get into it. Firstly, at first and foremost, let me introduce my amazing guests. I'm going to go first with first time on Albert JTV. Del Llewellyn, mate, it's a pleasure to actually finally meet you. Welcome to Albert JT. Pleasure is all mine. Thanks for having me on. No, nah, Del, honestly, it's a pleasure, mate. We've got so much to talk about with yourself and the two other guys. Um, so, people, if you've got Instagram and Twitter, if you if you haven't, but you should have it, the, the Instagram handle's going along the bottom of the screen in the banner, and it'll be on each guy's is box so you can see it. All the listeners, you just have to imagine you can see it. Um, come into the amazing Ruth Beck art for a debut on Albert JTV also. Ruth, buzzing to get you on. How have Thank you been? Thank you. Oh, really, really well. Excited for today, especially beating up with you three guys. It's just marvellous. It's an extravaganza. Extravaganza. <laughs> it is, That's the it word is. of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, I, I might even use it a few times as well. And last <laughs> but not least, um, super, super, at Goal Art, so stroke steady sketches. Fran, you've been on my channel before, but this live story, you finally made it. Welcome aboard. I'm welcome to everyone. <laughs> no, I'm so excited to come on. I'm a bit starstruck by being on on screen with you guys. So yeah, I'm very excited to chat Arsenal art. Like it's such a niche, and you guys live it as well. Yeah. And all like the challenges and like all of the dynamics of trying to do like football art. So I'm really excited to talk about it. No, no, it's it's, it's like I said, I'm 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 in awe to get such talented people in in my vicinity. So. <laughs> I am very excited, people, I must admit. So I'm going to get straight into it. As people have might not have seen Life Stories before, or if they have, they should know what's coming. So as you all will know, if you don't know already, all of my amazing guests are gooners at heart. So I'm going to kick off with, um, I'm going to kick off with Fran, actually. Ooh. Your Arsenal story. Why Arsenal? Earliest memories and your influence mm -hmm. supporting the club. Hashtag the Arsenal. Hashtag the Arsenal. Yes. Um, so I, I'm quite unusual in that. I haven't supported Arsenal my whole long life or, or even supported football. Like my family hated football growing up. <laughs> um, my dad's very like arty and creative and he's like, oh, football. I can't stand it. Um, so <laughs> it was, <laughs> he really hates it. So we never watched it. Um, but it was only when I met my boyfriend at the tender age of 16. So I'm now 25. Gosh, well, Fran, uh, that's yeah. a long time ago for me, Fran. That was, I tell you. <laughs> no, no, that must have been yesterday, Albert. <laughs> so, um, for the, like the first three years, I just watch him, like watching Arsenal, and just think, like, he's going through so much agony. Like, I'm never going to support this club. Like, football doesn't, football does not look fun because he was just, it was just, it was the difficult times of Arsenal. So, like, mm. what twenty, about twenty six. Well, we started like twenty. 14 was sort of when I met him to maybe yeah. like a couple of years ago and he was just like always in misery um but despite that I ended up watching so many games with him that 
I just got more and more into it and that's how I started supporting and now like uh, I'm just as of about two three years ago I mean I, I was always into sport but just became completely obsessed with Arsenal and then yeah fused it with my art and that's where I'm at now so yeah I'm like a baby in the Arsenal fan base but I feel very lucky to have been welcomed in like no one's like gatekeeping how long you've been a fan for um it's a very welcoming mm. like fan base so yeah <laughs> a long answer but no it's no friend that was a more, that was more than good enough answer in my in my eyes listen <laughs> every Arsenal fan has a very different um start to their journey some for people it's the hybrid days some people it's the Emirates era and you can't help when you're born so um you made the right choice friend you made the right right choice indeed absolutely but um I'm going to come to my next amazing guest. I'm going to come to Ruth, actually. Ruth, tell us your, your earliest memories and why the mighty Arsenal. I'm a lot older than you guys. Not a lot really. older. Never. No. I am. So my <laughs> earliest, well, I was, I'm from Hybrid. I was born and bred. So my, I remember Arsenal from, for every other reason, even more than football, just going to my dentist, walking past the ground, all that stuff. So <laughs> we always had Arsenal. It's always the cheers were always coming through the kitchen window from the garden, you know. But my earliest memory was in 1979 and we did the FA Cup final and we won. We won 3-2, Alan Sunderland scored and my brother went ballistic. Man um, United. Yeah, Man United. Mm. And um, they did the parade, um, obviously from the ground up to the town hall then, back in those days. And my mum dressed me in a red and white poncho and my we went up, my brother and I went up with my mum because my mum's a massive Arsenal fan and um, we stood in Highbury Barn just by Highbury Park and the bus came up the hill and it came round and we I just remember looking up and my mum was quite disappointed because Liam Brady looked unhappy for some reason he was probably hung over you know he was probably hanging uh, at the front of the bus Go and on, my mum was like my mum was like geez you could have smiled you know kind of thing I was like all right mum but yeah that was really really the earliest memory that I could remember is just the parade in 1979 up and then my brother ran after the bus I was with mum and he disappeared as he always did and then he came back with this big blue and yellow rosette and he still got it actually oh, so wow. yeah so That's memories cool. yeah yeah my brother was is still a massive fan and he when we won that final he um reenacted every goal and he ran out because we lived in like a sort of almost a cul-de-sac Balfour Road it has a dead end and he just ran out and he got his football and started kicking against the wall and he reenacted Alan Sunderland so yeah so that was my earliest memory but like I say not I'm much bad, older than it? yeah not bad uh, yeah, but friend um, just you saying that you were th you're 25 my son's 25 so yeah, yeah. I feel really old now <laughs> hi mum hi mum I could hi, be mom. your mum Ruth, oh, Ruth, Ruth, Mama. Ruth, the key set. Ruth, the key saying is is is, is on, on my channel definitely because a lot of people heard me say it. Um, Twenty one plus a little bit of VAT. Yes, yeah, definitely <laughs> a lot of VAT. Come on. <laughs> but no, Ruth, that's a great memory. Listen, um, amazing. So yeah, seventy nine. Um, incredible. Um, it was two nil up, and they, they brought it back to two all. And you know, yeah, they we, got it back to two nil. My brother was yeah. like, "Mom, mom, they scored again," and she was like, "Don't worry, they're going to do it." They'll win. And she was right. I and mean, we did. Wow. Yes. And of course, we have an, an amazing record in the FA Cup, which I like to share to some of the rival fans, just on the yes. odd occasion. But it's, it's our <laughs> cup. Our so that, cup. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Now, Ruth, fantastic, Fran and Ruth. And last but not least, Del. Del, let's have it for you, mate. Give me your, oh. your, your, your low down memories as Arsenal. Yeah. So um, I've supported Arsenal for as long as I can remember. I'm pretty sure that was down to my mum. Um, for one where she's always supported Arsenal and my dad even though he's Welsh he had obviously Cardiff City oh, um, cool. yeah um, and he sort of supported Arsenal as well because he had much of a choice um, yeah so I just grew up supporting Arsenal I think my first memory was was it the Cup Winners Cup when beat Palmer oh nil, no. Smudger that's one yes. of my first sort of memories I, I used to get that confused with um I think it was, was it Cup Final or the League Cup with Steve Morrow? 93. Like, I guess that was 93, so it was year yeah. four, wasn't it? So I, I was getting those confused because I was like eight or nine years old. Um, so, yeah, so I sort of remember them. Um, and then 
the year after, of course, David Seaman got loved my, by Naeem. Oh, he? don't remind me. Oh, no. uh, oh, I, 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 it's what, it's, I was my like, firmest memory. I remember just, like, <laughs> my Arsenal gear, my Arsenal duvet, and just bawling my eyes out. Um, yeah, absolutely devastated. I remember that. Uh, so that was sort of like my earliest memories um, of Arsenal. Um, yeah. I've got what the other question is now. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. No, you answered it. No, no, you know what? Like, all right, okay. No, you did. You did. No, no you know what? I, I always say to people like, as you know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember Arsenal winning um, league titles be before the start of the Premier League, which should give away my age a little bit. But um, yeah, the, the cup winners' cup final, man. It, it's just, it's I, I, the Arsenal's European record really, really wrangles with me really, really bad yeah. because it's it's poor. I mean, we've lost too many finals and. Um, you know, listen. We're gonna have to like, we're gonna have to learn again when we get back in the Champions League um, and take baby steps because yeah, what we've done in the Europa League, we could have got we could have won it at least once in my humble opinion. But now, nah, Dels, it's it's a it's a very very key point I must say. Big up to the people in the chat. Shout out to where's that amazing woman gone? I don't have to get a comment up again. Where's she gone? Um, where's she gone? There she is. Hi, Bruce. Oh, Sophie. Sophie. Nicola. Salute. That's it, people. That was. <laughs> Right. Left, right, left, right. That's Always for you. Scouts. That's oh. for you. So, so Dil, I'm going to stick with you, actually, when we move yeah, go on. on. Um, we're going to come to your Arsenal hero. Now, I know this is a very difficult question, but everyone has. Everyone always has their own. I mean, everybody knows mine. Well, I'll, I'll tell you about it anyway, but um, Ian Wright, 100%. But Dil, for you, who is it? David Hashtag Seaman. ability, character, memory. David Seaman. David Seaman was Shout. my absolute idol. Um, I was a goalkeeper when I was growing up. Um, I pretty much had every single goalkeeping shirt. I had everything to do with David Seaman. Um, I said, just opposite, I've got a David Seaman signed shirt to me with a bit of my artwork signed by him as well with like a massive frame. Like he was just the one. <laughs> um, yeah. Hence why the whole Naeem lobbing him <laughs> was even more of a killer. But then obviously I experienced like Euro 96 where David Seaman was, was just amazing. amazing. His penalty record as well in the stage against Scotland. And yeah, he was just a massive inspiration for me growing up. I used to watch the David Seaman story before every football match yeah. as like inspiration. I modelled everything about my game. I probably had, that's a head's bad moustache to be fair. Um, <laughs> long hair, the curtains that he had at one point. So yeah, absolutely idol. No, uh, good shout. Before I quickly come to Ruth, actually, yeah, David Seaman. Like I remember in that in the Cup Winners' Cup semi-final. This is going way back in get Sampdoria. Yeah, three amazing saves of yeah. the penalty shootout. People yeah. go and Google that. Unbelievable. Yeah, because that was top, as well, didn't he? Yeah, that was a top top um, Italian side in Sampdoria in that in that semi-final. So um, yeah, Seaman's safe hands as they, as they called him. Safe hands, yeah. That's yeah, what he signed himself, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, great answer. Ruth, come into you. I know there's probably so many to choose from, but you've got to choose one, Ruth. Oh, it's easy for me. My favourite, favourite player is Santi. Santi Cazorla. Wow. I shout. absolutely adore him. And I really hope, because I keep getting told this, I don't know if it's true, but I keep getting told that he's coming back to um, like mentor oh. and work at the Arsenal. And it, apparently Ooh. Arteta's got plans to get him back in. So, yes. So, yeah, Santi. <laughs> That'd be amazing, yeah. wouldn't it? Such Absolutely love player. it. I, I don't know if you can see, but I've got his shirt one of, on my yes, wall there. You can see it, yeah, Ruth. you see that. So yeah, yes, he takes can. pride of place in my office. I love him. Yeah, nice. It's, Ruth is a good shot. He's a he, for Arsenal I mean, fans that don't remember him or I didn't see him play, but just he's one of them players that are very rare that you yeah. actually didn't know whether he's like right or left footed. He um <laughs> He didn't score a mass of goals. He only scored what twenty five goals for Arsenal, but they were beautiful. And he yeah. his nickname is the Little Magician for a reason because he yeah. is just magical on the ball. Yeah, Adam He's Sandler, wonderful. Spaniard. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's done a great, no, great shot. Great That's shot. Brilliant. Amazing. I footballer. love him. Amazing yeah. footballer. And, and I hope he does come back. Yeah, I, I, I hope he does too. I hope he does too. Then come to my amazing friend. Fran, you hit me with it. You tell me what who your Arsenal hero was. Um, so I didn't. This was when I was about six. I didn't know anything about football, but I had these family friends, and we were camping. And <laughs> bear with me, bear with me. Oh, we will, we will. God, God. <laughs> there was a couple of ponies like across the field, and my friend, I remember, he was also about six. Like named these 
I can't remember one of them, but he named this one pony and it just stuck in my mind. He named it Thierry Henry. <laughs> I had no idea who this guy was, right? But I was like, oh, cool. Like, yeah. And then when I started getting into Arsenal, that, that's the thing I remember. Like, and it feels like almost fate that, um, yeah, obviously, like that player was always going to stick in my mind, like it does with so many other people. And I'm young in my learning of Arsenal history and stuff, but I've seen mm. like the highlight reels and the way Thierry played. And I know it's very like uh, an obvious choice, but I mean, obvious for a reason. Yeah. Mm. Um, just an incredible, iconic player. And this guy was an Aston Villa supporter, age six. And he was calling this horse in the field next to us, Thierry Henry. <laughs> uh, what, what must have been like 12, 14 years ago. Yeah. And that kind of just shows like the status, like worldwide, like across clubs of, of this player. Um, yeah. Just yeah, massive, iconic. So. <laughs> now, you make a good point because you know what it is? As, as good as we've seen players play for like our club, Arsenal, like when people, well, one of the good things about social media, even though there's some bad things, but the good things about it is um, when they show highlight reels of footballers. And yeah. I realise, I say to myself sometimes, I knew Henri was good, but Jesus Christ, man. Like, I, yeah, I'm amazing. I love just goals, um, dribbling ability, the, the confidence, show arrogance of him. He was just amazing. He's amazing. He was superb, and, wasn't he? Yeah. And I think a testament to him, right, Rival football fans, some will admit it, some won't. When they do that thing with Premier League best 11s, I don't know anyone that hasn't put him in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a testament to how good he is. So um, Most of the ex-pros usually say that he's like the one yeah. that they feared in the Premier League. Like there's one yeah. person they go, oh, shit. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Very, it makes you feel very proud that like he was... He played for us. Club, like, like and he's still... And he's still a massive Arsenal fan, isn't he? He still yeah. really yeah. does support the team. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Now you guys gave some great, and obviously mine is obviously righty. Just you know, yeah. Everyone loves righty. Yeah, yeah. Even some, <laughs> even some of his media work, his Instagram stories, I me in tears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves it. He does. He does. But people, we're going to move on to the next one, and this is the one that I can't wait to hear all your answers. So. Yeah. What I'll do is, obviously, audio listeners, this is not really going to impact you, but I will get images of these guys' stupendously amazing work <laughs> on the screen. Um, so I'm going to kick off. Yeah, I'm going to kick off with. I'm going to kick off with. I'm going to kick off with Doe, actually. No. Um, I want to hear this. Yeah, this is what we're waiting for. <laughs> Arsenal, Arsenal artistry. A lot of questions in between, but I'll show you about. Where did it all begin for you when starting out? Your passion for your particular art that you do. And who were your influence? Hashtag skilled artist community. Okay, so Go on, Dale. for as long as I as long as I can remember, I drew. Um, and I drew on everything, everywhere, anywhere, all the time. Um, and my parents were actually really like supportive of that. They just allowed me to draw pretty much all of my spare time. If I weren't playing football, I was drawing. Um and of course, as I just started to grow up and you started to learn more skills and my love for Arsenal grew and grew and grew, I then started to put some... I did a massive mural when we won the Dublin in 1998. Oh, wow. I did, so I did, yeah, so I did all the players. Um, a couple of them, their T-Rex hands, so it's a bit bad, really. But, you know, I did a massive, <laughs> like, you know, the old crest on the wall and stuff. And I had David Seaman drawn in my garage and, and on my DT folder and stuff. And... Yeah, I, I just I just drew consistently, um, probably until I left school, really. Maybe yeah, like two thousand and one, I think it was. Um, and yeah, that's just that's pretty much what, what I've done, really. Um, and after that, I didn't do any drawing from the age of sixteen to about thirty-one. Yeah, just you know, had to live and get a job, and you know, I was quite self-sustainable as a young adult. Obviously, with, like renting places and that. And, Bill space, so obviously artwork wasn't the the priority. And then yeah, I got to thirty one and realised that something was missing. Yeah. I always had that creative spark. I'd always be doodling on stuff, get myself in trouble. Um, and and yeah, I, I decided to pursue my career in art. So I quit my job in recruitment, became a postman, which made me finish at one two o'clock. Yeah, um, worked my craft in the evening. Got a little bit better at it. 
realized this is definitely something I wanted to do. Started yeah. to get a few commissions from your friends and family and then their friends and family and so on and so forth. And, and then I just took the plunge into the world of art. Uh, me and my wife downsized our house and stuff. Um, it's only rented, but we still we knew it was going to be a struggle, and the amount of money that was going yeah, to be of coming in was going to be a bit shit to start with. So, yeah, we had to, we'd get rid of a few items, <laughs> you know, cars, and <laughs> yeah, stuff like yeah. that, because we knew yeah. we just knew it was, wasn't be easy. Um, but yeah, we've sort of rode that wave um, and starting to see some nice results now. So, yeah, that that has been my journey. No, oh, absolutely amazing. I've got so I did I put some images up when um wow. you tell me your amazing work. Um the messy one, Del oh, wow. I, first thing I want to ask you quickly, sorry, before yeah, I come to the others is how far in advance did you know that you was going to the Football London Awards? And how was it like meeting the players as well? So the London Football Awards, I didn't actually know I was going to be going for so originally it was I was invited to go to the VIP section. It was about 45 minutes. That's yeah. when everyone started to arrive. A few ex-pros like Frank McClintock, George Graham was there. Oh, um, next, like, yeah. I think Gary Mabbott was there. and yeah. Just there's just like lots of, you know, from the older professionals. Um, and, and I was going to be drawing a portrait of Mikel Arteta when I was there. Um, I, was, I was advised to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then it ended up being, actually, do you want to go for the whole thing? Like, uh, yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we had to add, add the meal and stuff, um, and uh, yeah. So I probably had about five to six weeks maximum of knowing that oh, I okay. had to get certain drawings done. Wow. Um, and we sort of oh, yeah. had a sort of discussion with one of the players that I was going to meet them, um, but the other two wasn't necessarily planned. So with Mikel Arteta we were just in the VIP section. I was drawing him and then I looked round and he's about two metres away from me. Um, so of course, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it was definitely squeaky bum time then. So yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, it, yeah, it just got a little chat and him and his wife were there and just seeing the drawing. I'd basically done his face and his hands because yeah. the rest of it was passed on charcoal and I wasn't going to do that in a tuxedo. I'd make a right mess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yes, yeah, so we had a brief, oh, a brief little chat. Um, Love the artwork. Is uh, so, yeah, some kind words and yeah, yeah. Wow. We'll see what happens. With, we'll see what happens with that. And then the Bukayo Saka thing. We I done. I drew that Bukayo Saka portrait actually about two years ago. I think it was now. Yeah. Um, and they actually got one signed by him in the past and then donated to the Willow Foundation, which is part oh, of wow. the football awards. Yes. Um, so we done that again. Um, and it was just a case of you know, he then he then found out that I was there, and he said, "Oh, can I meet him?" So there's me stuck into my fish and chips, <laughs> and I just leave it. Bug off upstairs, thinking of fish, and then just had a chat with Bukayo. Um, yeah, and I've seen him met Aaron before that as well. Yeah, at unreal night. Oh yeah, wow! Is, yeah, was... crazy. No, yeah. Del, and Del, I must say, you look rather suave, mate. I said this guy looks sharp. Yeah, you know what. I spend, okay. I spend six days a week just like a tramp, really. So <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the same hoodie, same, same, same trousers. Um, yeah. I do wash in between, change the pants. Right? But, um, <laughs> of course, of course. yeah, of, of course. course, yeah, basic hygiene yeah. and all that. Um, so and yeah, so when I had an opportunity to dress up, I knew I'd do something. Yeah, so forked out a few hundred quid on a suit, and there we go. No, absolutely, mate. The picture I saw pictures were unreal. Um, honestly, mate, I, I'm, Cheers, I'm in awe you. of. Um, Listen, I'm definitely sending some work your way. Don't worry about that. Because um, <laughs> family much. picture, of course, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, just great. I'm going to get your picture up again quickly. I mean, w Captain Williamson, of course. Um, yeah. Listen, love Leah Williamson, not just for footballing reasons. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll send that publicly. So um, she's a, she's amazing. <laughs> but um, yeah, great stuff, man. Honestly, um, Shaka, Gabriel Jesus, yeah. Aaron Rambo Ramsdale, and of course, the godfather, Arsene Wenger. And not, yeah. and, and not many others, but. They were absolutely yeah. amazing, man. Thank you very much. Super, super proud, question. man. Go on, go on, go on, were any of them, like, different how you expected in person and why? Exactly or... exactly how they come across on, on the oh, box, no. honestly. Yeah, you could just see, like, Mikel just had some... It was just, like, an intensity to him. He smelled amazing, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he he looks like he smells good, doesn't he? He, he did. Yeah. When, you said he was, when you said he was two metres behind you, I was going to chip in. I didn't want to interrupt saying, like, did you just get this waft of cologne and then, like, <laughs> <turn it around? laughs> Yeah, honestly, it was just... Uh, yeah, I, I did. I saw him first and I was like, 
oh no I looked away again yeah. and it was closer, <laughs> like, like a horror movie oh, thing no. yeah. I don't um, know how you hold it together I would have gone like no I was, I was right and I, <laughs> and I, I tried to draw after my hand was shaking and obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my man. business partner was just like, looking at me and no just laughing pressure. Um, yeah. but yeah I, Aaron Ramsdale, exactly how he is on TV, and so he's Bakayo, yeah. right? Such a nice oh, lad, yeah, hundred percent. Genuinely, such a such a nice kid, and he was just he he loved up again the, the drawing and stuff, and so yeah, we're going to try and get a few over to the players and Mikel and stuff, and see what happens from that. Well really, done. so oh, cool. absolutely so if, cool. Yeah, thank before you. I come, before I come to the amazing roof, then my Tottenham wife is in the chat. Believe it or not, um, <laughs> if, even she is aware. <laughs> of class and sort of fine. Holly, I'm not gonna go in too hard on you because I know you're in mourning at the moment because obviously you have no <laughs> manager, but it is fine. But Holly, we'll come to this conversation when we meet for Finn Elizabeth. But Holly, lots of love, but, but yes, support a different team, it's fine. But um <laughs> <laughs> let me come to the amazing Ruth Beck art. Ruth, the same question to you. Let me get it up in case <laughs> you really forgot what I thought he was saying in the first place, but Yes, how did how, how where did it all begin for you in terms of the Arsenal artistry and starting out and passions? Well, um Arsenal, the drawing Arsenal was uh, was like therapy after I had major surgery on my hand. But I've always done art from like Dell and and Fran, I'm sure, from yeah. when we could hold a crayon when we were tiny, you know, it's like always, always drawing. My dad was into art, my mum was always keen to get us, you know busy and so I've done that forever but um in 2018 um before well a couple of years before I had um, osteoarthritis in my hand um and it got worse than worse I had cortisone injections all that none, none of it worked uh, so I had major thumb surgery um where they reconstructed my, my thumb joint and I couldn't use it for 11 months oh wow and the one thing because I had drawn so much before I I the arthritis had got so bad I couldn't even sign my name on a piece of paper or anything. So I, the one thing I asked the surgeon was, will you be able to make me draw again? And he said, yes, 100%. I thought, well, that's, that's obviously, you know, great. So let's see yeah, if that yeah, happens. Yeah. So anyway, um, it was 11 months recovery. And part of the, you know, the recovery was to just learn how to hold a pen again. And um, I bought myself a tiny little watercolour set. And because I'd never used watercolour, I'd always done colour pencils and uh, graphite and acrylic paint. I'd done animals and all sorts of different things. And um, yeah. I bought myself, it was, it's actually here, it's this tiny little um, watercolour set. And I sat in my kitchen at the time and I thought, what do, what shall I do? I thought, I'd paint something I love. So I painted Highbury Barn because that's when my mum always did her shopping. Yeah. So I thought I'd never done a building before. So um, I sketched this building out. I thought I really enjoyed that. And I put it on um, a Facebook page that I was on um, for Islington. And I thought, I wonder if anyone recognises it. And I put it on and the sort of responses I got were phenomenal. And we're like, that's Hobie Barn. I was born there and I did this, I did that. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. So I thought, oh, I like this. So I then painted the clock tower, you know, the Victoria, yeah. uh, Queen Victoria clock tower in Highbury Hill. and. Yeah. Um, People were amazed by that. And my brother's birthday was coming up. And I thought, oh, he's a big Arsenal fan, obviously. And I thought, I'm going to paint him the uh, the entrance in Highbury Hill, you know, the West Gate entrance in Highbury Hill. Yeah. And um, I did that for his birthday present, and he loved it. And I thought, I'm really enjoying this. And I've never done buildings before, never done brickwork, and I got a bit obsessed with it like yeah. thousands of bricks yeah, yeah and yeah. I just learned as I went on I learned how to do windows and shading and brickwork and and I just thought I love this and I love Arsenal and I love Highbury and I thought we'll do the two together I love painting so it was just like a natural kind of progression progression into yeah. and then people were saying well can I buy something and I was like well I don't know really I've never done anything like that before <laughs> and then I thought well how do I do this so I bought myself a printer and I thought I'd, I'd print some things out. And it just, over the last four years now, it just sort of ballooned to where we are today. And it's just, I love it. It's my life. It's genuinely, oh, I, yeah. I cannot go a day. I'm sure my two yeah. wonderful artists here will agree. I just yeah. can't go a day without wanting to draw. It's just inherent in us. 
Yeah. So we yeah. just love it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm bit, drawing what I love, you know, and, and, you know, when you draw what you love, I think it shows in your artwork as well. Mm. Yeah, with, yeah, with your art, especially Ruth, I think that it really shows like they're so, they're not just buildings like on a piece of paper. There's so much like emotion and feeling and memories like infused into it. Just sure. like, yeah. probably like you don't even like, just probably just done instinctively because you've got that connection with the place and i think that's why your work is so magical and like connects with so many people i i, I it's amazing i don't know how you do it i do not know how you do it i cannot, i hate drawing buildings Ruth, yeah. just, just to add i to never that. did them before yeah. it's just, i don't know where it came from Ruth, really. perfect and beautiful yeah. and i love them no honestly like because I, I i mean let me get that picture back up again like Ruth, this one going under just not far from the. Uh, it is amazing the detail. The bridges. Yeah, this is incredible. Well, the and, bridge. Um, we yeah, went to the um, the Juventus game, the friendly, um, yeah. in December, and it was snowing at the time. And I I was walking through, and I said, I've got to get a photo because this is the view I want. This view, because yeah. obviously it's going to the match, isn't it? And people recognise that view so so much. I mean, I mean, you go there, and it's filthy. I mean, yeah. it's really in real life. It's quite grim and nasty, but yeah. um, you know, I just thought I just need to capture that view. And yeah, yeah. In watercolor, it just looks it looks dreamy, doesn't it? Yeah, like amazing. People, so I get so many responses from people. Like if I do a pub, people go, "I got engaged in that pub," or my kids, you know, had their birthday party, or yeah. like churches, or they got married there. And there's so many responses from all the buildings for so many reasons it's just lovely you get so many stories from people no because i obviously i purchased a couple roof i need to get a bigger one of the, the, the victoria concordia um crest it's, it's the one i've got too small i need a bigger one <laughs> a, i need a bigger one but i did get this one i remember the canon i love the canon man i said no nah, that's the one i've definitely got to get in touch with you it's, get it's one. just arsenal isn't yeah. it it's just unmistakable yeah, yeah. And obviously our lovely Mido and um oh, and my little portraits. Iconic... Yeah. <laughs> my little portraits are just trotting in the shadow of our beautiful Fran and Del. <laughs> but I enjoy doing them. I, yeah. I prefer my brickwork, I must admit. I'm more confident yeah. when I'm doing my bricks. Yeah, you listen, <laughs> like I said, when doing this this live story show, um the, this is why I do it. I get amazing guests like you three and talking about something completely different from a from an artistry point of view is is, is incredible. Um, not just to see your work, but to actually talk to you as individuals, as people, and you know, to get your passions for why you do what you do. And yeah, listen, I, I'm sending you virtual hugs. You can't feel it at the moment, but oh. I've talked about giving you all hugs, man. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to come to um, my amazing friend, Goal Art. So, Fran, yes. same question to you. Um, your passions, what got you into it? Tell us, tell us all, Fran. Tell us all. Yeah, um, so like just always, like since I was like tiny, uh, it's always been art for me. Like um, we grew up in Spain and my sister and I would just sit outside and like draw the garden since, since we were like two or three. Uh, yeah. Just And if we were ever bored, then it's drawing. And my dad um, is really arty. And so my mum was uh, uh, a lot of the time she would have to work extra time like as a teacher. And my dad, like his, uh, to entertain us, we'd do like drawing lessons with him. It was, it was amazing, like drawing eyes. So he had this book of like different facial features. And since we were tiny, we'd be like copying eyes with my dad and stuff. So like, it's such a good memory. And like, I was just fascinated with trying to make them look as human, like, and as realistic as possible. And I've got a twin sister and we were super competitive with like how <laughs> realistic we could make something look um yeah I'll, I'll bring her on stream in a minute <laughs> i'm at her house now but um we just it's just always been like i know it's cliche but like our favorite subject like we were good at other subjects but it was always art where we like excelled but then like you can be good at something but not like doing it but yes. i love love doing it and that's when you go from like having maybe like an innate like predisposition to like being good at something but when you love it, that's when you spend hours and hours and hours doing it. And um, so, <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of developed into like um, a coping mechanism as well throughout school because um, we had like I had a really difficult time with like bullying and my mental health and lots of mm. family things. So I just hide away in my room and try and like portray the emotions that I was feeling through portraits. 
yeah. <laughs> through portraits. So um, for me, it's like a really like trying to convey emotion. That's what what I really enjoy. Like lots of self portraits to try and kind of explore how I was feeling and that sort of thing. And I never considered it to be like a career because it was just for me like yeah. something fun. It was just like, oh, I, I'm working on my real life and then there's my art. Like, that's just what I do. Um, I never, ever considered it to be a career. And I went to uni. Um, I dropped out of one uni because of my like mental health and stuff. I, I'm really passionate about it. I always talk about it. And then I started oh. another uni, but I did music. Um, <laughs> I did like popular music because I'm also a singer. And, but I was so broke throughout uni that like one person asked me to draw their horse. And then um, I like drew their horse, got like 50 quid. Um, and then suddenly it's like, oh, I can afford like a, a few like bread rolls or whatever. <laughs> and I thought like maybe like in between my dissertation, like my uh, assignments yeah. and things, if I pick up commissions, I put, Dell will probably know, like once you get one commission, like they just all come flooding in, especially pet portraits. Did you, have you ever done yeah. pet portraits? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's pretty much all I did. Yeah. Fair so enough. I was, yeah, so throughout uni, so I wouldn't like starve. Um, I was like, <laughs> like drawing, drawing people's cats and stuff between like going to lectures and <laughs> things I, like I draw that. your cat for pot noodle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like, um, but, like it, it wasn't. It, I, I I love doing that because like I try and again like I try and convey like I like to hear about who that cat is and what their personality is like, and then try and show that through like little pencil strokes and brush strokes and things like that but um the, i've really always been so fascinated with human portraiture and um, yeah. del can probably relate i think just a portrait it, it's like um i i'm we're biased yeah but i think it's it's like a level up from like ph photography because you've got someone like manually creating every single like shadow and brush stroke and it almost like transcends photography and it gets into this like magical realm of like I don't know of like humanity like through the paper and for me I'm just fascinated like mesmerized by trying to draw portraits and trying to when you look at it see what that person is feeling maybe a bit about their background it just as they say a picture paints a thousand words doesn't it and so yes, well said. um so yeah amazing i mean i was drawing pets and making a bit of money but it's not really my passion i love like human portraiture because i'm so like emotional myself i'm sure a lot of artists are and, um so but as i was drawing these pets which could be quite tedious um i'd be listening this was a few years after i met my boyfriend he got me into arsenal um well, I <laughs> listening to talk mm. sport and watching matches with him drawing pets in front of the matches um and listening to every single Arsenal podcast out there and just one day he asked me like can you draw a football portrait for me and that was this big like Arsenal legends one I have you got um I don't know if you've got a photo of it I should have sent you one yeah, but it's this big right. Arsenal legends one and I didn't even know who any of these players are right because I'm like so new to I'm gonna find it I felt like a massive, <laughs> like a massive board um <laughs> But I, I drew them and I, I loved it because um, it was trying to convey the emotions of them in their celebrations. Yeah. Um, and it's just all about emotion for me. I love it. I'm trying to convey emotion. It's just, ah. Um, but then they were like really small. So I thought I would absolutely love to draw some of my favorite players like closer up, like um, sort of so you can see every single like crease or on the face, like their expression, their hair. Um, and I absolutely love it. So I think the first one I did was Saka. Um, just, yeah, absolutely loved it so much. and love reading about the players like before I draw them. Um, in, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I do it in colour, which I kind of regret because it's, like, it's such a headache because, oh, it's, yeah. Um, I, I kind of wish I'd chosen to go pencil, but Dell's like got that market cornered. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's enough success in the world for all of us. I know. That's what I love about you guys as well, because I, I started doing it and then I realised, like, I was like, oh, my God, there's this guy, Dell, who <coughs> does photorealistic Arsenal players. Like, he's going to be so annoyed to see this, like, young upstart. Oh, no. <laughs> young like, upstart. Oh, no. oh, my gosh. Like, but then, <laughs> like, since day one, have, like, been so nice to me. And, like, I think it's just genuinely exciting, at least it is for me, to see someone else doing something similar and, like, 
experiencing the same like difficulties and that's not like football and social media which we'll get into um Whoa, i could i would love to talk one one day like just artistic techniques with you guys i'd be i'd be such a, a nerd yeah. for that discussion like about like the portraits maybe dell i just i'm absolutely fascinated by it and once i start one of the portraits uh i tend to like not want to and this is where i differ from you dell i don't want to get up like until i've finished it so sometimes yeah. i'll spend like that's a long time in the chair friend yeah. yes because there's so much detail i know i'm trying to break out of that but sometimes i'll do like all nighters because i don't, don't want to get up until it's finished i'm quite like ocd and perfectionist <laughs> it's really bad so it's quite unhealthy sometimes but i'm just absolutely fascinated by it and um can i carry on just a little quick bit go on go on quick go on go on sorry 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 um but yeah then i i work like not many people were just buying like straight up like portrait prints at least from me anyway because i don't have much of a platform yet and i was noticing that like arsenal merch is so popular like all the new kit drops and stuff so i thought a way to like make my art kind of approachable like to more people would be combining it with arsenal merch and streetwear so that's what i do now basically. yes you do and I, yep. I love it i love it yeah it's fun fun and i'm gonna do like more ranges with different designs but all centered around like the the realistic portrait in the middle so it's cool cool stuff kind of making mm -hmm. art trendy <laughs> not that yeah not that it's not but you know <laughs> <laughs> down with the kids yeah. making it uh, since the old woman in the corner <laughs> no, no yes no fran yes of course you, you obviously you're gonna you started with um the goal art so website with the clothing range which I obviously have got a couple of pieces already and I, and I will get another one. Um, but yeah, incredible. Yes. Um, I had a couple of people when I went to one of the games with where I got my lovely custom top from Fran. It was, it was an apology top, by the way. <laughs> but it, it, I enjoyed it. And um, a few I people saw through, I slept yeah. through a live stream. Yeah. A few people. Like... It's all right. <laughs> a, few people, a few people to say they came up to me and said, oh, where did you get that from? And I said, look, this is the lady. This is the woman. So um, yeah. Fran, keep up the amazing work. Um, thank you. And also, so thank you. For, no, that's all right. And thank you, obviously, for being open and open up about so now important talking about mental health to you as well. So hundred percent. Yeah, hundred <laughs> so, percent. This has been a this has been a very cathartic show so far. But um <laughs> let's move on to the next one. This should be interesting to get you guys thoughts. I'm gonna come to Dell. So outside of football, sporting heroes. Um you might have one or two, but if whoever you can, whoever you uh, came so up with. I sat, I sat there with my wife and I was like, <laughs> like sporting heroes from the past and present, it's nothing to do with football. It was hard, wasn't it? it yeah, it went really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> football's, uh, honestly, football's, everything. Like, football's, football's been my, my life, my sport. And of course, I've enjoyed yeah. certain moments like the past, obviously, when England won the Rugby World Cup and, yeah. you know, um, just I mean, like, that's like Mo Farah. Yeah. Oh, I, was I, was work, I was working in the pub. <laughs> Can't then. say that one. Sorry. Just pretend no one said it. And you can see he's about to win. And I've seen people at the bar. I was like, everyone, leave me alone. I'll watch you next minute. And then obviously he's won and we're celebrating and then got the drinks going. Um, so, yeah, to say that I had another sporting hero that wasn't football, I, I probably can't give you a name. But, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm but so I pleased there, you said I'll, that, Dale. No, I find it really <laughs> difficult, but I will sit there and watch most sports and appreciate yeah. legends like you watch like tiger woods and the way he's come he came back from his like leg right. hanging off or whatever it is to win those at the masters again and yeah you know i, I just i enjoyed watching those moments and especially those that have come through adversity or something that had a setback mm -hmm. and they come back like those probably like rocker uh, sorry rocker rocky sort of storylines yeah. <laughs> rocker um <laughs> I know we meant, bro. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and stuff like That's that. That's a film. Yeah. So as a, yeah, I know, but the storyline behind it. Adrian. Um, <laughs> I, 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 whoever it is, I, I quite like Frank Bruno when I was Frankie. young. Yeah. And just it just popped into my head. But I, as for like another hero that wasn't David Seaman or anything yeah. to do with football. Yeah, it was really hard, Albert. I have really nothing. Really threw the curveball in. Yo, this is what Life Stories is about, people. This is <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, I don't. You came up with some good names, though. No, you did. Um, I'm gonna come to Ruth. Yeah, you guys have to. You can either be. You can either. You can be one or two. It can be one. It's up to you. Well, you, you keep me with it. Like Dell, I sat there and thought, oh wow, every any other sport than football, this is hard. But I tell you, a name that did come to mind, and um, it was Michael Watson. 
the boxer. Good shout, yeah. Well and done. being a gooner as well. And yeah. what and if you know the story of Michael Watson, he was uh, injured in the ring when he fought Chris Eubank. Yeah. And um he had terrible brain damage from it. Yeah. And he was in a coma for months, I think. Ages, yeah. yeah. Ages and ages. Um, but if you know of Michael Watson now, he raises thousands of pounds for charity. He's learned to walk. He's talking. He was on Sky Sports oh, a few months ago, and he is happy. And it's just yeah. wonderful to see well him. Said. And um, so for me, as far as like a an amazing sportsman, and, and he was amazing before the injury. He was a yep. top, top boxer. Um, and it was such tragedy what happened to him. But... Yeah, he's quite a hero, I think. Ruth, he's still and, going. Yeah, amazing shout. Absolutely yeah, amazing. Good shout that one. Brilliant. Fran, um, I'm going to come to you. Go on, now, sorry, Ruth, go on. did you have one more thing to say? Go on. I was going to say about an upcoming girl, go on, um, go on, female go on. sports, go on, Ruth. and that was Sky Brown. Do you know her? She's I watched her on the Olympics. Yes, I saw her. The, the skateboarder. She's only... Yes. 14 or 15 yes. and she looks incredible Great and, shot, I, yes. and I hadn't Great seen shot. that sport before in the Olympic yes. skateboarding and it was just immense and I really hope that she just flies because she is wonderful a Ruth. really great little mentor as well Ruth that is an amazing shout there you I, go. Listen, yeah, Ruth, <laughs> I did my I'll homework. Blue Peter badge in, in the post. I'll get you. Oh, thank you. That'll get me in the museum for free. <laughs> Ruth Beck is Ruth Beck's a secret skateboarder. Oh, yeah, well, I, I'll roller skate. Like Tony Hawk, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hawk. But Fran, come into Fran. Um, same question to you. Um, yeah, obviously, like present or past i don't know but andy murray like absolutely legend i love yeah, tennis um I, I grew up like doing every sport basically under the sun i was really into athletics as well but then i lifted too much weight and just, like cracked my a disc Ooh. in my back and now like, oh, i can't do, i can't do like any sports which oh no, but, um, no so doing that it's either andy murray or i don't know if you guys remember the brownlee brothers uh of course Andy's yeah and it's not yeah, they're Yay. so Because, uh, yeah, I love them. Do you remember them? I think it was 2012 where they ran over the finish line together. Yes. Like, yeah, holding yeah. arms, just amazing. I love those guys. They're so down to earth as well. Um, so um, Andy Murray as well. I remember when he won Wimbledon. I was working at Weatherspoons and I, I stopped serving and <laughs> went like, he won Wimbledon. And I went, yes. And then my boss was like, get back to work. And I was like, Andy Murray is just one Wimbledon. What is, <laughs> Don't you I, understand I, tennis? I know. I quit like not long yeah. after. They were awful. <laughs> Fran, it, Fran, Fran, it's a good, it's a good shout, Andy Murray, because I, I actually think he's actually quite underappreciated, particularly playing yeah. in an era where you had Federer, uh, yeah. Vidal, and Djokovic, who've won more than twenty Grand Slams. Oh, Federer is amazing as well. Um, I just, I, he cracks me up. He's so dry, like his, his sense of humor as well. Yeah. He's a bit like Ben White. <laughs> I used to be like, what's wrong with this guy? And now I watch him. Yeah, he's a funny oh, guy. Um, and for females, females, <laughs> sorry, have you seen Friday Night Dinner? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. We'll okay, save no. that for another live story part two. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you'd know, you know. Anyway, but Jess Ennis and Simone Biles, two other Olympians. Great shout. Um, yeah. Really inspirational. Like, um, Jess as well, like, she was massive for, like, body positivity as well because people were, like, criticising her, like, calling her fat and stuff. And someone struggles with that as well. Like, she's really inspiring to me. And Simone as well. Uh, I've done loads of gymnastics in my past and she's overcome so much and it's just she's beyond like the best of the best like she's breaking records left right and center if you guys haven't seen simone biles uh gymnastics then check it out just any sport i love and i could just go on for ages great question great shot. <laughs> before we come to a final question i hope i still got time for you guys I've got, i'm going to squeeze yeah, it yeah. in um yep. one one person i'm going to talk about actually i've talked i've asked this question on many various shows um i could think of so many people one came into my head now for people that do know me very well before YouTube and the last couple of years, um, I like a lot of sport, in particular rugby, rugby league. And I'm going to get this man on screen because I think he's absolutely um, amazing. And that's Kevin Sinfield. 
um, OBE, currently a defensive coach for the England Rugby Union side. Um, an absolute Trojan in rugby league for Leeds Rhinos from 07 to 2015. Um, England and Great Britain um, as well. Um, he has a, obviously one of his best mates who play rugby, which is Rob Burrow, who has MND, motor neuron yeah. disease. Um, Kevin Sinfield is an absolute Trojan. Um, in um, 2020, done seven marathons in seven days. Um, the target was 77K. But by the time he got to his seventh marathon, he'd done 1.2 million. And by the time he finished, he raised over 2 million. Um, in December 21, he did 101 miles in under 24 hours, raised over 2 million pounds. And recently, as of last year, done seven in seven ultra marathons, which he raised over 1.5 million. Um, this guy is an, is an absolute Trojan. He was an amazing player. And the money he's raised for MND in the last two, three years has been absolutely incredible. Um, so that's one person I'll definitely give a shout out to. Flaudits to Kevin Sinfield. I mean, that's wow. my question. Yes. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing guy. Um, but yes, last question. I'm going to come to Franfa because you might have to duck. Yeah, I might. I'm sorry. Right. Artistry, <laughs> social media, stroke, networking. How have you find combining artistry with social media to promote your work? Pros and gods. I hate it. I'm so oh. sorry, but I hate it. I'm sorry. Oh, I suppose. Like, it's just such a relentless grind. Like, have you if, tried, yeah. if you're meant to have, it's like with any marketing, if, if you want to get kind of exposure and get your art out there, it's all about like consistency and stuff. And I'm a very inconsistent person again. Like, I might, I'm all over the place just generally, like in life. And I can't stick to like schedules or, anything I'm, I'm getting tested for adhd actually so um i really i hate it it's so much pressure i wish i could just paint and draw the, the and then get paid <laughs> like somehow but <laughs> i need to get it out there and i'm so bad at it and it stresses me out so much so that's just a very polarizing question for me I've, you've triggered me <laughs> <laughs> It just stresses me out so much. Um, so, yeah, that's my view on it. But I do it anyway. It's like, for me, it's like an evil necessity. There's so. always, there's, there's that's why, um, that's always, there's, 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 with social media, generally speaking, there's always pros and cons. Um, uh, pros, yeah. though, there are pros, which there is are pros. obviously, are. I know, I, I tend sometimes to blink around <laughs> with pros because I'm so stressed out by like, oh, how many likes am I getting? Like, are, are enough people seeing it? Am I doing enough marketing? Um, yeah. So, but obviously, I've met you guys through it. Um, wow. I've met me, Albert and Ruth in person. Been so yes. inspired by Joel, and he's given me the odd like little pep talk, just saying like it's okay, like you've well, got God. this, and like um, <laughs> <laughs> just made me like continue and not just throw the towel in. <laughs> so, I'm I'm probably the most dramatic out of the three of us. I think <laughs> um, you're probably not. I think you're going to have a bit of a hard time there. I know a lot of artists that go through the same shit as what we do um, mm. because you're on a platform and I think the way the world is now is that the more likes, the more followers that you have, the better, the bigger that you are. And that's not the case. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where, especially the young people today can get really sucked into this trap where they want to be seen the bigger, so the following, the likes, the more yeah. value that they feel behind, mm. behind that work. And it's just bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Something something really encouraging though happened to me the other day because i'm so obsessed with like numbers and i compare myself to other accounts and um just it's such a minefield it's so bad for your head um but i've only got 300 followers right and actually like trossard's wife reached out to me leandra trossard's yes. wife me with my 300 <laughs> followers, asking for um like to, if i could make like a trossard like hoodie for her with with that um, amazing so, amazing that's I think incredible. I've got some faith back that it's not about like how amazing you are at like making reels or TikToks. <coughs> Maybe there is something to be said just about like making great work yeah. and then hopefully like the sort of cream rises to the top sometimes. Yeah. It's just it's discouraging when you see people arguably like who aren't <laughs> like oh, okay, this sounds horrible, but like not very talented at something. Um so it's just all oh, getting like viral on TikTok for like having like a nice body or or something like that and we're, yeah. we're busting our guts like 
trying to make amazing art and getting like no three likes, likes for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's just it's, it's quite discouraging. But yeah, getting that getting noticed, even though I've not got very many followers, was really encouraging. And I think it's just focus on the art, um, and it'll it'll come in time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And Fran, and like I always say to you, um, I don't know everything, but I, I, I know a little bit. So uh, I'm always there for a pet talk. <laughs> oh my God. You need to come on here and just like. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm going to come. No, Fran, no, there, there is, like I said, that's why I phrase it in particular in the, the last bit in terms of pros and cons, because there is. And, and I know, and I know definitely from experience, uh, as people might have seen a lot of my content when I speak about social media in particularly um coming to Dell, your views on that particular question um like, like i said it's it's completely pros and cons um and yeah. you're gonna get it's as I said, being an artist i think and especially in the social media world it's all i think it's it's harder and probably yeah. more important now to be able to conquer your mind rather than it is actually the skill set because yeah. it's, it's it's just i said it's really really difficult and like like fran said you know there are people that aren't quite as maybe as far along into the journey as say I am, yes. but yet they'll have a hundred thousand followers. But that doesn't necessarily transcend into sales. I yes. know people that have got ninety thousand and literally make nothing. You know, and you want to go for you know, it's all about your intrinsic motivation. What are you doing it for? Do you believe it can happen? And and who is it you're exactly targeting? Um, and if you look for me, and again, this isn't egotistical. It's just it's just the way it is. But if you look at how many people have their artwork signed by Messi. There's not yeah. many. Um, I am very fortunate in that. Beautiful, brilliant. But I only have eleven thousand followers on Instagram, and I've got about seven thousand on Twitter. So, and if also, you're gonna, if you can use the gauge of followers and likes and all this stuff, then I shouldn't be anywhere near that. You know, so it just goes to show that actually, just focus on your craft. Well yeah. said. You'll get to you'll get to where you want to be, and it'll be in your own time. Yeah. And you said if you suddenly went viral right now, would you be able to handle it? Mm. You know, no. you have yeah. to go through all these <laughs> yeah. shitty times. Yeah. Order, like you said, the cream rises the top, whatever. You have to yeah. go through this all, and then, and then, you, yeah, just could you just be ready? Then you'd like yeah. to think, how do you know yeah. until you, until it happens? So yeah, no, Dill, well, well said. I'm going to bring in Ruth on that. You might probably have the same similar views, or you might have your own kind of. Um, no, your, so, your Albert, I'm so yeah. sorry, but I've got to shoot off to band practice. That's right. I'll so, put it in the chat. That's fine. That's fine. Was, People. Fran's, um, Fran's details. Let me let me let you let me just say before you go, Fran. Um, everybody's links are in the description, so go and subscribe or follow, it, whatever means. Way, but it, the links are there in the screen, and obviously, like I said, in the bio as well. Fran, you got to go. Do your thing. Thank you, guys. Much love. Take Cheers. care. Good luck. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay. And we're gonna and we're gonna we're gonna wrap up with Ruth's words of wisdom. I'm just exactly the same on social media with that Dell and, and Fran had had. It's like, you know, you get the good and the bad pros and cons, but we do it. I mean, I use social media just to um, get exposure for my artwork. Yes. I don't use it for any other means. You know, there's nothing really personal up there. Every now and then you might put a little joke on or something, but it, it is just a tool in order to share the artwork that, that people seem to like to see and i think dale will agree it's like a it's like a gallery really and i don't yeah. want it to get too heavy or or involved in it the only um bad feedback that i ever get are usually from people that don't like arsenal and it's just a, <laughs> an attack <laughs> on <laughs> arsenal really and i just think well okay fair enough and, and you what you do is you just scroll past it yeah and that's all i do and it's I like i don't take anything personal I think I think it's good to be able to like differentiate criticism with critique as well. I yes. think it's important. If someone can come along with a really constructive sort of bit of yes. bit of critique about your work, you just go, actually, okay, there's a few people who said that and they said it in a really nice manner and I sort of understand it and then you move yeah. on for it. So like, and you can when, learn from it. When Arsenal shared my Aubameyang picture, I got grilled by Arsenal fans. Yeah. It broke my heart. But I look back and go, Do you know what? hundred percent right. The way some people said went about it was a bit shit. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It's just the world we live in. You've got to deal with that. Um, yeah. You know, so yeah. And we need it to skin. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, definitely. But yeah, I think it's, it's, it is a tool and it's there to, I think, create connections with yeah. people that can enlighten yeah. your lives, just make a beg, you know, help you out in times of need. I see with the creators, obviously, I know obviously friends, obviously other struggles. My, my 
DMs are always open to try and help with that yeah. because yeah, they were eyes. We yeah. spend 10 hours a day by ourselves, criticising ourselves consistently, yeah. trying and to make ourselves better and blah, 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 blah. Dale, can I ask you, do you, you know, you when you finish your portrait, yeah. do you always get anxious putting it out in the world, big wide world, even though they are brilliant? Do you ever get to Good the question. thing, Great am question. I, is it good enough to, to share? Mm -hmm. Have I done it right? Because everything I paint, as soon yeah. as I press that send, I am expecting people to just completely and utterly destroy it. Um, no, Every I, time. I, thought, I never got that no, confidence up there I, I thought, I, Like I said, I, I'm incredibly self-critical. When anyone noticed me, knows I beat myself with a stick. But I know that I've also got my work to a certain standard. Um, yeah. So it's like, okay. if you want to criticise, that's fine. Mm. I might take on board, I might not. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I know, I know where I'm at. And I wouldn't have had the opportunities that I've had if I sucked. Um, exactly. So exactly. That, that's why, yeah. you know, Good like Messi, you know, <laughs> Messi wouldn't sign your sign my work if he didn't like it. End of. That's all right. You know, so I must be doing something right. Oh, you are. I don't really, Without I don't really a doubt, I beat myself up anyway. So like, okay. I look at it and so that's amazing. You know, when people are like, "Go, oh, you're the best." I'm like, no, seriously, I'm not. Shut up. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> But you are really. No, <laughs> well, I think yeah, you are. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're, you're all amazing. But no, you know what? It's a question I like to ask my guests because I, I like to hear their own experiences. And um, I, I listen, I, I'm I'm very open about um, the, the pros and cons of social media and um, doing YouTube for the last, uh, it'd be three years this June, actually. And um, you learn very quickly. Um I remember when, you know, I'm not a big channel. Let me get that out there first and foremost. Um, I'm small fry in comparison to a lot of people. But what you do notice is, is um, in terms of support in inverted commas, uh, you know, oh, well done, bro, great channel, like what you're doing. When you get a little bit more recognition, that stops. The retweets stop. The likes stop. The how you doing, bro, stops. Um, then you become a target. And I, I have noticed that, and even more so watching you guys doing your amazing work. Um, I've seen people come out on the Twitter space, for example, who suddenly are artists now. Never never, never saw them before. Um, so it's 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 mad because, Del, you make a good point. If you're not good at what you do, people are not going to talk about you. Um, yeah. You know, I've gone and done, you know, a couple of fan cams for a, a particular channel, AFTV. Now, yeah. I've seen people come out in the comments I've never, I haven't spoken to for the best part of two years. Like, yeah. it's, 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 but it, it's not a surprise to me when, when, when I see it. Um, so it is crazy. Like, like I said, when you do a bit better than, you know, some, than what some people might be doing in the same industry, it does really stand out in terms of whether it be support or certain, I put it, not going to swear before 9 PM, salty comments, should I say, um, to put it politely. Yeah. But um, it is a learning curve. There are pros and cons. There are pros. I've met some amazing people. You two. They will, it will happen in the flesh one day. Um, Absolutely. You know, some of the other Arsenal YouTube community. It's, it's been amazing. I've, I've been lucky enough of, to have been asked to go on bigger channels and um, to give my voice. And, you know, sometimes people do like what I say sometimes. Um, so, listen, it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, social media is not going away. It's only going to get bigger um people and and it is a tool and it is how you use it ruth you make yeah. a good point i don't it's very rare you'll see me go on the twitter space and tweet anything political i just oh, never. never ever oh, go that's down suicidal that yeah. don't do that <laughs> stick to the arts yeah, yeah so that's, that's all that's what i do you'll see nothing from me anymore and and um jenny's put something in the chat yeah one thing I'd, you guys probably can probably understand this as well and people that do it is um i don't think i've seen i understand what jealousy and resentment was anyway <laughs> before youtube life but it's become even more apparent now having doing this unfortunately um you can't help how people feel but uh, but it no. happens but uh you That's yeah enough. Yeah, you guys, listen, you've been absolutely fantastic. Big up, Fran. Fran just popped up in the chat quickly. Hey, Fran. <laughs> we love you, Fran. <laughs> yeah. But as I said at the start of the stream, um, I was always going to get you free on. I just actually needed to tell you, um, which is which would help, because obviously I'm going to do the bloody show. I was delighted when you yeah. said that these Dell and Fran 
God, brilliant. I was like, yeah. yes, because I, I hate doing podcasts. I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm terrified. This causes me immense anxiety and everything. And I was not going to do it on my own. But I knew that guy and that lovely girl were going to be here as well. Then I was like, yes, yeah. I'll do it. If, they, if they're yeah. going to do it, I'm doing it. We can talk. Okay. It's all right. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Let me give a special shout out to Trev. Trev, I love you, mate. I've seen you for ages. Hey, Great. Oh, Thank you, Trev. Gorgeous, yeah. Trevor. <laughs> We love you, Trev. Yeah, yeah 10 cup finals left. Yeah. But no, um, big up to people in the chat. Amazing interaction. Um, apologies I didn't read out all your comments, but obviously I just like to keep the flow of the show. So I'm sure if you notice with my channel, that, that's pretty much understandable, like most YouTubers. But um, yeah, amazing interaction in the chat. Smash a like on YouTube and Facebook, and also tweet and reshare on Twitter. Um, but no, guys, you've been amazing. Del. Tell the people where they can find you, amazing man you. Uh, so you can find me on Twitter under Llewellyn underscore art um, and then Facebook and Instagram, Llewellyn Illustrations. Um, you can find me on TikTok as well as Llewellyn Illustrations, but I don't use it that much. I'm working on it. <laughs> I don't know how to use TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're good. So that's I'm so old. Me. And obviously you've got my website as well, which is, again, just newanillustrations.com, where you find all my artwork that specifically just being sold on, online. Or, of course, it gives you links to people that I work with, where you can find yeah. all the memorabilia. Yeah. No, Adele, fantastic. It's a pleasure to meet you, man. And, yeah, to, to keep up your, um, yeah, amazing work. Honestly, man, it's, it's incredible, man, what you do. Plenty more and to come, um, hopefully. Yeah. Hooray! Yes. <laughs> I'll say a, I'll say a virtual thank you to Fran, but I know you're busy. Go and do your singing, so we'll catch up at some point. But um, <laughs> and last but not least, yes, last but not least, the amazing Ruth Beck. Uh, Ruth, you're absolutely oh, delight. Love you to pieces. Um, oh, you're people where they can find you. <laughs> right, I am at Ruth Beck Art on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, and my website. It's all Ruth Beck Art. It's simple, yeah. easy. That's it. Just yeah. Google me on there. Yeah. Ruth Beck Art. <laughs> I'm a short surname. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, people. yeah. You've you've heard it there first. You've heard it verbally. And like I said, the link is going along below the bottom of the screen. And also it's in the links are in the bio as well. So people go and subscribe and follow. And of course, your host, Albert JTV. Episode 19 is over and out. But um, yeah, as you like I say, subscribe to the channel, people. But um, yes, it's been very cathartic. Great to hear the artist's views about their passions for what they do. Um, if I can find my outro, that will probably help a little bit. If I can find it. We can say it. it. Absolutely typical. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? There it is. But uh, people, we are going to be over and out. Episode 19. Great to get live stories back. Um, and yeah, um, I will see you for episode 20 at some point, my amazing people. So this is Albert J TV. Over and out. Live stories. See you soon, people.